All right. Uh, so this is going to be a lecture over pages 19 through 32 in Fahrenheit 451. Uh, here we go. As you approach this section, you might want to reflect on what the mechanical hound could represent in this culture. Uh, we see Montag piecing together what has made him so he can pursue a more substantial and gratifying life. This means he's got to undo some of the social engagements and expose his understanding to the world and burn in a different way, be passionate in a different way than he does at the beginning. His possibilities, they are our possibilities, your possibilities. His discussions with the world is ours. How can you burn in a different way that helps you live your best life? That's what uh, Bradbury is asking you. Play, first of all, uh, there's enormous benefits to play for children and adults. Adults don't play enough. We almost never laugh, especially if you're like me, a 40-year-old middle-aged man with the sickness and with, you know, three kids and, uh, you know, chaotic life. I don't play enough. You don't either, probably. Are there enormous benefits to play? Absolutely. Uh, should high schools still have uh, recess? Yes. Uh, we want kids to be curious, to read widely, to try new things. Intelligence is just curiosity. Aaron Schwartz says. So let them be curious and play, or don't, and let things continue the way they're going today. Teens, when you now, when you rule the world in 10, 20 years, don't let this continue to happen. Mandate recess. Mandate, you have to put those screens away, those phones away, when you go play with each other. Learn how to play again. You see all these enormous benefits, and many more, that, you know, Clarice is teaching us and Montag that. Just think. Do we need these things as a culture? Do you need these things as an individual? Okay, well, if you want to change the world, start playing. Not all the time. If you did that, play would become tedious. It would become work. Uh, she, Clarice, sees a psychiatrist, and he wants to know why she hikes, goes to the forest, watches birds, collects butterflies. Well, because she, she's immersed in nature. She understands that she herself is nature. You're a human being. You are nature. You're part of nature. Don't say, I don't like uh, uh, nature. Yes, you do, you are nature. And if you don't like it, you need to learn to like it. 93% of the time of human beings is spent indoors. That's insane. If you're doing that, get out. You see the enormous benefits of exercising in nature, of breathing in the tree air, the nature air. It smells good, it smells good for a reason. Because you should bathe in it, literally. Be a forest bather, uh, as the Japanese have learned in their research. You're not like the others, Clarice says. I know. This suggests what? That she's met firemen before? Under what circumstances? Yeah. Uh, when I talk to you, you look at me. Do you look at the people that talk to you or not? Look them in the eyes. Show some respect. Build the confidence to look a person in the eyes. Not nonstop. You know, you look away every bit, but it's a confidence builder. It shows you care about the other person. I can see more in your eyes than anything you could ever tell me orally. Okay, so what's the hound represent? You've had some time to think about it. Uh, do we have anything like this in our culture? Yes, we do. Um, but in this culture, it's a tool used by firemen to hunt and kill dissidents. If you violate 451 norms, you are tracked via, via your biochemistry and hunted on live TV. The hound is just one way that technology has been adapted to become harmful in 451 culture instead of beneficial as it's intended to do. Technology is neither good nor bad. A hammer is a piece of technology. I can use a hammer to build a house. I can use a hammer to bash my brains in, right? It's neither good nor bad. It depends on how the tech is used. The hound, it's a marvel, but it's only used to kill. And, you know, Montag's wary of the hound because he knows how easily it can kill. He's seen it kill. He's helped it kill. He's a firefighter after all. Uh, the hound represents everything brutal about this oppressive government. Uh, instead of due process, dissidents are hunted to entertain the masses. The hound is not conscious. It's programmed much like the citizens of 451 culture. They too have been programmed, just like the citizens in China that are under the influence of an evil Chinese government that is doing terrible things to all kinds of different people in China. But it's not their fault. The Chinese people are good people. It's a Chinese government that isn't. Oh, wow, do we have anything like the mechanical hound? Oh yeah, you better believe we do. Uh, you can look up this creature that functions. It doesn't like, dislike. It has a trajectory that we decide on it. This creature was used in, uh, oh gosh, what's that country? Singapore, to make people go inside during COVID, during the quarantine. 
It literally hunted people to keep them inside. Folks, I don't know what to tell you, but 451 culture is our culture. Are any cultural practices in 451 similar to ours? Do we have a DNA database? Yes, we do. Does this affect our liberty? I don't know. That's up for you to decide. Is it ethical? I don't know. That's up for you to decide. What are the benefits and drawbacks to having a DNA database of Americans? There's a lot to benefit. We can catch crooks, but could it also be used to do other things? Yes. Uh, your genetic information is worth money, and there are companies like 23andMe that are fighting for it and then are going to sell it and do God knows what with it. Um, check this video out. This is just wild. I don't know if you can see this, but here it is. There's great sound to, to the video. That's the mechanical hound. Okay, we have the technology. And this, this is decade-plus old tech. Imagine what they actually have that they don't show us. Okay, the government has a history in our own nation of controlling the reading habits of Americans, much like they do in 451 culture. Uh, the librarians were urged to basically report on suspicious reading habits of people. And it's the librarians that stood up to this madness from the FBI. Uh, and thank goodness for the librarians who deserve much more money and credit than they get. Uh, Delaware County librarians, shout out to you. You're the best. Describe your school and youth experience versus Clarice's. Where are you know your experiences similar to hers? Maybe you uh, use a Venn diagram to you know point out the things that are similar about Clarice's schooling experience and the things that are different. Okay, go ahead and read that. Think about that. Um, there's a lot we could say about the similarities and differences. Spend some time on this. It's meant to exhaust the youth so that they're tamed, but the frustration felt by them is expressed in their fun, which is anything but fun, which is just violence outside of school. They don't communicate. They beat people up, destroy things, and play games like chicken. Two cars race at each other, and the first one to swerve is the chicken. Of course, what happens if you don't swerve, right? People are identified with the things they own and are themselves meant to be purchased, used, and disposed in an automatic way. Are we a culture that identifies people with the things they own? Yeah, you better believe we are. Is that better than identifying people by what they do, by how they act, by how they benefit the world? I don't know. You decide. Um, they name lots of cars or clothes or swimming pools when they do talk, when they're not staring at the screens. But they say the same things. And nobody says anything different. They have the same jokes over and over. At the museums, it's all abstract art, so they're censoring art. My uncle says it was different once. And they are a materialist culture. Um, we are a culture that you know, encourages shopping. The consumer economy depends on you buying stuff you don't need to try to make people impressed by you. That's what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's how we're programmed. It's not necessarily a bad thing. But be recognized for the things you do, the positive contributions to society, as opposed to the things you own, which are just shiny stuff. And you can't take it with you anyways. Clarice, she's Guy's first teacher, the one that teaches him how he has wings and can fly. Um, that's my ringer. Yes, it is a uh, ohm ringer tone. Okay, uh, she shows him that the alleged antisocial and disturbed people in the society, they actually have a higher regard for society. They're more sane than those who declare themselves as normal and like Captain Beatty and uphold this dystopic and perverted American way of life. Um, Sir Ken Robinson says, the more time young adults spend on social media, the more likely they are to feel cut off from the rest of society. More than two hours a day doubles the chances of feeling isolated. Mental health problems and social isolation are at epidemic levels. Yes, they are. I'm a teacher. I've been preaching this for years. Nobody seems to care. We're inherently social creatures, but modern life tends to compartmentalize us instead of bringing us together. Yes, 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 sir, Ken, yes. I read, that, I read recently that teens spend nine hours a day staring at screens, and then we wonder why they're a depressed and anxious bunch. Don't buy your kids' phones. Don't buy them social media, unless you want that. Clarice is the first teacher as I said. Um, so, ah, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, this is a great video by um, a, a woman who worked for NPR, who's brilliant, and it's all about having great conversations. So go to TED, TED Ed, or just TED, and Google um, Celeste Headley, how to have a great conversation. She's going to show you how not to be like Clarice's students. Okay. There's a radio humming about 
some war that might be declared? I don't know, right? As the readers, we're, we're unsure. But we know that if you challenge 451 culture, you're taken off, you're insane. Beatty shows how clever he is, saying any man's insane who thinks he can fool the government and us. Notice Montag showing empathy here for the first time. Um, this is the first time he's thought about what it's like to burn someone's house down, what that would feel like. Um, this is a great short on empathy from Brene Brown that you should watch. And as you watch it, you'll see that educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. And uh, this is Beatty warning Guy. Beatty knows that Guy um, is doing something he shouldn't be. That's why the hound is, you know, making noises around him. Think of some of the foreshadowing you're seeing. There's an old man in the park that's referenced. There's a ventilator grill that's referenced. Okay. She leaves him, does Clarice, and there's this pivotal moment where he questions and thinks about his culture and how best to live. And so he's starting to transform that thinking to action. Here he is mindful of where he is and what's happening to his life. He's experiencing mindfulness. Take a moment right now, pause the video. Take five minutes out of your day to experience mindful meditation. What's it like to feel your body? You are an embodied creature. You exist within a body. Did you remember that? Can you feel that? Or are you stuck up here all the time? Montag's starting to realize that he is an embodied creature. Mind, body, spirit, heart are all connected. They're all one. The outside is not separate from the inside, folks. We're all one. There's a connection there. Engage in mindfulness, similar to Guy does uh, in the rain. You know, if you do this five minutes a day, every day, for the rest of the term, I guarantee you an A. Guarantee you. Are you watching this video, students? Well, if you are, you know about this. Um, if you aren't, you know, you won't know about this. I'm telling you right now, it'll change your life. It'll make you better in all sorts of ways. You'll have increased clarity, compassion, courage. It's hard to do at first. My first five minutes of meditation was hell. It felt like I was on fire sitting there. But um, when you're as ill as I am, you have to do it. You have no choice when you're as ill as I am. John Kabat-Zinn, let this man teach you. Watch his video. He's amazing, is John Kabat-Zinn. Okay? Uh, do that on your own time. Watch those videos. All right. Um, if you want to read John Locke's Political Society and go through to answer the assessment questions here, uh, you're welcome to, but that's totally optional. Okay? All right. Um, I think final closing comments on this section from me, things that I may have missed. Um, they're violent, this culture. They've stopped reproducing. Uh, they're not having babies anymore. Clarice understands what love is. She says it's when you like someone and don't want anything from them and you get to know each other. That's love. Yep, that is love. Get to know one another and don't want anything from another person. Okay, that's, that's love. Clarice is right. Um, do leaves smell like cinnamon? Pick some up, smell some, tell me. He's changed already, is Guy. Already our character is evolving. He's more relaxed, Clarice says, than he's ever been. He's laughing now. Do the school shootings in Clarice's situation remind you of anything in our own culture? Is it eerily disturbing that Bradbury's predicting things that are not coming to pass? You know, Beatty is warning Montag. That's why he tells the story about the fireman in Seattle that purposely set the hound loose on its own chemical complex and set it loose, committing suicide. Now, why would you do that, Beatty wonders? Well, because you're stuck in a hellish culture and you don't know any way out and you don't know what to do about that. Middle of 30, what guilt is Montag experiencing? Why might he feel guilty? What might he be doing that might make that guilt happen? He remarks about how all firemen look the same. Is there some sort of genetic sorting going on in this culture? Do we have genetic sorting? Will we? We won't have to decide that. And of course, of course, I know what I think about that, but I'm here to teach you how to think, not what to think. Once upon a time, what kind of talk is that, Beatty wonders? That's a clue. A clue as to what Montag is doing and a clue that Beatty knows something. Okay? Fool, Montag says to himself. This is evidence. Evidence of something. Um, you know, hopefully by now you're putting the pieces together. If not, that's okay. Stay tuned. It'll happen. All right. Finally here, uh, the scene with Clarice and how light and fun her house is and, it con and their conversation, it contrasts sharply with the scene in the firehouse where the men, you know, they have cat fights and dog fights and rat fights and, you know, they, they kill things for fun. 
and they drown things for fun. Um, this, this should disturb us, right? Um, and yet, um, if you've seen uh, the Dahmer series, you know that it's not entirely impossible that uh, that's something happening too. Okay, all right, 19 through 32, there you go.